Hey, it's John McEnroe. I'm the guy setting you up on court today. I'll be helping you play the greatest sport on earth. Let's get started with the basic lessons. First off, we're talking about how to move around the court and how to hit the ball. Let's watch a demonstration, and then you can try it out for yourself. In this demo, you'll learn how to reposition on the court and how to hit the ball back to your opponent. Let's get into it. One of the main things behind a quality shot is player positioning. To get a better position, always try to move back behind the baseline and to the center of the court after your swing. That way, your best plays for the next shot. Standing back and letting your opponent's shot bounce will increase your chances of hitting the ball back at the optimal waist height. Use the move input to move around the court and reposition in the center of the court behind the baseline after each shot. It's a pretty common mistake to stay in no man's land. No man's land is the area just inside the baseline up to the service line. Hitting the ball from here is hard. There's less time to react, and chances are that's where your opponent's shot will bounce to. A ball hit at your feet just before or after the bounce is always going to be tough to control. If you want to hit the ball after the bounce, it's best to stand farther back. Get close to the baseline and allow yourself some extra time to set your stance and get a comfortable shot from the waist. That'll get you some extra control and a more effective aim on your next shot. Now the player's back in an ideal position. Let's see how to deal with an incoming ball. Look, it's not rocket science. Press down on one of the shot inputs and release once the ball's getting close. That's how you do it, playing with style. Okay, so quick recap. This is the stuff to take away from today. If you think you've got all that, we can move on. Or if you want to go back some steps, we can run through. Start off by hitting a few balls. Great work. Try to avoid no man's land. Keep moving and stay in position. After each shot, return to the center of the court behind the baseline to get ready for your next shot. You're making great progress. Keep moving. You want to move back to the center of the cord behind the baseline so you can get great work. Moving back to the center and staying out of no man's land are pretty vital, so keep that up. Hey, great to see you again. Today we're working on a vital part of a quality shot, the timing. We've got another demonstration to show you why timing is important and how the timing meter can get you results. Today we're talking about how to hit the ball with ideal timing. This is one of the most important aspects of your game, and mastering it will take you up to the next level. You'll pick it up just fine, but it takes some practice. Returning a ball is easy. But timing it to perfection, that's something else. Getting your swing at that exact right moment plays a huge part in your power and your precision. There's four possible results here. Too soon, good, perfect, and too late. The ideal time to release the input is just before the ball reaches you. And just to underline, it's all about when you release the input and not when it's pressed. The timing meter is something you can use to know exactly when to release the shot input to get perfect timing. It appears above the player whenever there's an incoming ball. Releasing the shot input when the meter's in the green will hit a shot with perfect timing. Let's watch this player hit a few more balls. As you can see, hitting it with perfect timing gets you optimum precision and optimum power. Less than perfect timing? Not so much. The shot's quality will be lower and could give your opponent an opening. Release the shot input way before the ball gets to you or when it's gotten too close, then the timing will be too soon or too late. Those shots are more likely to land into the net or head out of bounds. 
Okay, so here's a quick recap on what we've learned here. You think you got that? If not, we can run through the demo again. Let's have a warm up. Hit a few balls, then we can focus on timing. Now I'm looking for shots with good or perfect timing. No pressure. Good job. Great work. Good stuff. Remember that hitting the ball with perfect timing will always give your shot power and precision. Hey, great to have you back. Today we're aiming ground strokes and talking about how aiming relates to movement. We've got a demo ready to roll, so let's take a look. Okay, so today we're learning how to move toward the ball and how to aim your shot. You'll also learn the aspects of aiming quality and how to make your shots land close to a line. Before you know it, you'll be hitting winners left and right. To get there, though, first you'll need to move toward the ball using the aim input. In this example, the player is moving around the baseline to hit these shots. The important thing to understand when it comes to aiming is that you don't need to start aiming your shot early for it to bounce close to the line. You only need to aim with the aim input when you hit the ball. Up until that point, the aim input is used to control your movement. That means you can decide where to aim until the very last moment without losing precision. You can watch what your opponent is doing and decide where to aim right up to the moment you hit the ball. Let's drop the curtain a little. Here we're drawing an aiming arrow on screen to show the aiming direction when you hit the ball. Notice how pushing the aim input left and right will aim near the sidelines and pushing the aim input up or down will aim near the baseline or net. So that's the direction of your shot covered. Let's move on to aim quality and how to make shots land as close to the line as possible. Pay close attention where this player is aiming. There are a lot of factors that go into your shot bouncing close to the line, as shown by the green area of the arrow. Things like if you have perfect timing, if your forehand or backhand attribute is high, if the ball you receive is easy to hit, if you're not tired, these all play into it. A ball is considered easy when it's slow, and if you can hit between waist and shoulder height. Let's go back to this player's aim. On the other hand, your shot is likely to bounce far from the line, where the arrow here is red, or even to go into the net when your timing is off, when your forehand or backhand attribute is low, when the ball you receive is hard to hit, or when you're getting tired. A ball is considered hard to hit when it's fast or low when it reaches you, or both. Look how this player pressed the aim input deep toward the right sideline. He hits the easy shot with perfect timing, and the ball goes in by the line and wins the point. Now we've got a similar shot, but the ball's moving fast, and the player's timing is too late. The ball sails out of bounds wide and into the doubles alley. That's obviously what you want to avoid. Next, look at this guy with high forehand and backhand attributes and how well he aims. See how it makes it so much harder for their opponent to return the ball with a quality shot? When this other player with lower attributes aims, not so good. They can't aim as close to the line as easily, making it far easier for their opponent to hit good shots and pile on the pressure. That's it for this lesson. Now get out there and put all these wise words into practice. I don't want them wasted. Mastering this part of the game is essential, so feel free to watch again if you need. Here you can see an aim arrow, like we saw in the demo. This should help you understand when the transition from movement to aiming happens. Okay, start with aiming near the sidelines. Now aim deep toward the baseline and short near the net. All right, good.
Now it's time to combine aiming techniques, so aim for the corners of the court. You're hitting a lot of shots in no man's land. Remember to move back and reset. So far, so good. But we're gonna do one more round without the aim arrow and see how you manage. That's too many shots from no man's land. Remember to move back and reset. You're making great progress. You're hitting a lot of shots in no man's land. Remember to move back and reset. Keep trying. That was great. Don't forget that aiming quality is determined by many different things. So if you ever need a refresher, you can always come back and run lessons again. There's only one more lesson before we test your skills against an opponent. So don't be a stranger. Hello again. The training train needs to keep rolling, so let's move to the next lesson. In this lesson, we're learning various different ways to improve your serve, alongside how best to aim it. Coming up is a demo to explain normal and power serves and how to direct them. In this demo, you learn how to serve with precision and power and get the best out of the most crucial shot in tennis. There's multiple different ways to serve. Here we're going to cover normal and power serves, which are initiated by pressing or holding a serve input. Releasing the serve input early triggers a safe normal serve, accurate but not very powerful. Holding the serve input until the power indicator appears triggers a power serve. It's more powerful, but also harder to control. Next, let's look into how to aim and to pick the spot where you want the ball to land. If you don't push the aim input, the ball will bounce close to the center of the service box. Pushing the aim input will move your aiming spot in that direction, away from the center of the service box. You can use the visual indicator to see and adjust your aiming spot until you hit the ball. You only need to aim with the aim input when you hit the ball. Now that you know how to select your aiming spot, it's important to know what determines how close or far the ball will land to that spot. The ball is more likely to land close to your aiming spot if your serve attribute is high, if your timing is perfect, and if you're not tired. If your serve attribute is low, if your timing is off, or if you're tired, the ball will have a wider spread around your aiming spot. The shot will be less accurate. Okay, so let's get the rundown on what we've covered here. Do you feel you've got the measure of normal and power serves now? If not, as always, feel free to watch the demo through again. Let's start with some normal serves. Good serve. Sometimes it is better to get a serve in play than to power one over and hope. Okay, time to move on to power serves. Go ahead and continue with power serves, but I'm also going to need you to nail good or perfect timing. Now hit a normal or power serve into the highlighted area. You're making great progress. Get it with the next ball. Yeah, you're killing it out there. This is going to be an exciting lesson. You're going up against a real opponent. Let's take everything you've learned so far and put it into practice. Remember to keep moving and position yourself correctly on the court. Pay attention to your timing and aim your shots to make them difficult to reach for your opponent and to open the court for your next shot. 
Now, I want you to show me you understand everything we've covered so far. Play some points against an opponent and show your progress. Really great work out there. If you want to take your game further, we've got more advanced lessons. And clearly, feel free to drop by and revisit these basic lessons whenever you feel the need.